what are you guys going to show us here today and how does this apply to the average everyday field workers that are you know out in the field you guys are studying diseases all the time but for them this is not something they're frequently looking for absolutely so this is just a, a sampling of what we had in our research projects today but it's very similar to what we would have what you would see out in the field out in the storages and what would come in to us or to jeff to decide hey what is going on here and what can we do about it there's a lot of different things out in the out in the environment like they may be in the soil they may be in the air and they like to eat potatoes just as much as we do and so during the growing season, it's important that growers do the, they make the best management practices that they can. Ir either irrigate the best they can, use the right fertilizer at the right time, and use the right pesticides. And it's important that the pesticides are used according to the label. And when we do those things, we can avoid a lot of the problems that we have here. We can keep these, um, these fungi and these bacteria out of the potatoes so that we have a healthy crop. Yes. Now from the outside, what does it kind of look like to you? What do you see? Boy, I see a white growth on the outside. It looks a little dark, maybe. Little the eye looks dark. Looking inside, this is what we see. Jeff. Yeah, there's a. it, it looks like something has grown into this potato to this degree right here, and it's, it's turned it pink. I think we call that pink rot. And it's also nice, one distinctive thing to look for for pink rot is often it will have this nice, just distinctive line. Not always. Here's another example where the whole potato is taken over by, by the pink rot disease. But here we have a different kind of variation of it where you have that distinct line of healthy tissue to poor tissue. Now, Jeff, what's going to happen to that healthy potato? It's not going to take long for the fungus that's living in here to move all the way through. And once it does, it will start to look something more like this. And then it gets wet. And then you get other things that are going to come in, like bacteria that will make it break down and get soft. But right here, where it becomes really soft, starts to, to break up. And when, this, when you first have this disease early on, or the rotted part, it isn't soft. It does have a different texture than the healthy potato. If you're in the cellar and you see something like this and you cut it, it won't look pink right away. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes for that to show up sometime but you will notice a difference in the consistency of the potato. So healthy potato feels nice and solid. The part that's infected, it'll almost feel like it's been cooked a little bit. It's a little spongy, a little bit different. Then further on, you get to the point where it starts to break down and it gets really wet. You can't diagnose what's going on from the outside. You really do need to have that knife, cut it open, let it sit there, decide what's going on, and then you can make some management decisions from that. So what about this one, Jeff? This looks kind of similar to one that we just saw from the outside. It does. In some ways, it has a lot of similarities. But white the, growth. The white growth, it's a little discolored, but you know, it actually feels different. It actually mm -hmm. feels a little heavier. And oh, when Nora cut it open, we had this this dark brown to almost gray discoloration. And you know, and I'm, I'm gonna squeeze it, Nora. I'm gonna see what happens. Like see with this pink rot. I can squeeze it, nothing really happens. If I squeeze this, boy, how would you describe that, Nora? It looks like it's leaking out of the potato. It's like we have water leaking out. We call this disease Pythium leak. And the consistency in here, it will be somewhat soft. So your finger can go right through it. This typically is a disease that occurs at harvest if the potatoes get wounded or beat up. So it's important to have the harvest equipment timed so that you're, you don't have the potatoes bouncing around each other, but rather they're, they're staying together and they're, they're not getting bruised during the harvest operation. And this is always also too why we uh, try to avoid high pulp temperatures at harvest. We may shut off our harvesters, things like that, so that we don't have high pulp temperatures because warmer temperatures and wounding is very conducive to Pythium leak. Yeah, work that we've done here shows that if we take potatoes that are at a, at a pulp temperature of 70 degrees, the disease will be very, very high. Yet if we can drop that to 60 degrees when they get damaged, the disease is very, very low. And it's also really important to know the difference between these two. Yes, they look very different and making sure you cut them open, identify what you have, bring them in to the university or to Miller Research and to further identify it because your management is gonna differ 
on how you're going to handle these diseases based upon what you have. This one, Jeff, again, from the outside. It, do, you it, you know, it almost looks a little like the others, different color growth there, but um, it does look discolored. It looks kind of shrunken. It looks, it, it looks dry, though, yeah. to me. And what do you looks see? looks like fusarium dry rot. I'd say. I, I, we've got this growth that's right here at this end of the potato, and it's it started to break apart. She so has some cavities in there. And this is a very slow growth. You can tell the difference between these are very fast diseases that occur. This is a little bit slower. Yeah, so this is caused by a fungus called Fusarium, which is out in the soil. It can also be carried in on the seed. And um, again, when we have damage, which occurs at harvest, either through bruising, let's say the harvester isn't adjusted right, and so you have big drops, then it can damage the potato, and then the fungus can come in afterwards and cause this disease in storage. And I think. Nora, you've done some work about different varieties. Not all varieties respond the same way as this. Exactly. Some varieties are very sensitive or what we call susceptible to fusarium dry rot or that shattering that it can occur. And that's why we're so focused on bruise management. The way that we can let the, the more ways we can lessen shattering or black spot bruise occurring, the better off we are in terms of combating diseases like this. So yes, some varieties like Clearwater Russet is notorious for being a little bit more susceptible or a lot more susceptible to Fusarium dry rot. So let's say you're actually a truck driver and you're actually loading potatoes in the cellar from the cellar into your truck. You want to make sure that you don't have these huge drops or that you're just you know, loading the potatoes into and, and, and having them bang against you. You want to try to minimize the drops as best you can so that you avoid the damage and the subsequent dry rot that can come from that. And it's kind of hard to tell, but you can almost see the little damage that occurs on these edges due to some sort of mechanical hit, some sort of impact that occurred. As you're working with potatoes in the field, let's say you're running the harvester, running the piler, maybe you're running the truck, you probably want to do everything you can to treat these as gently as you can. Absolutely. So there's so many things that we can do, modify with our equipment making sure that we have a nice flow of potatoes, that nothing's really dropping, making sure it's not hitting metal, raising your stingers, slowing things down, speeding things up, just to try to maximize that nice flow where potatoes aren't hitting metal, potatoes aren't dropping a great distances, and that can really help alleviate some of these problems in potatoes. Do you see anything on the outside of this one? So that, that one looks pretty good. I, I bet that's totally healthy. Wow. And I was wrong. Yeah. What do you see, Jeff? Well, so here we've got a discoloration. It's coming into the potato, and it looks like it's almost in these little arcs, if you would, these, these half circles. And that's a great example of it. It looks, looks to me like it's a virus. It is. Because there's several different viruses in a, in a potato that can cause this kind of circles or disorder or necro what we call necrosis inside. Yeah, you could have, say, uh, it could be tobacco rattle virus or potato mop top virus. Correct, or even PVY. PVY. But in this case, it actually is potato mop top virus. The problem is this powdery scab organism, it can live in the soil for a long time. It forms these little, these little spore balls that are highly resistant to to breaking down. So they'll last at least 12, 15 years in the soil. So it's almost like there's a reservoir of virus in the field that will never go away. And sometimes you can see it on the outside of the potato, just right underneath the skin. And so um, when you are dissecting your potato, trying to figure out what's going on, you may see this internal symptom, but you can see some symptoms right under the skin. So let's try another potato. This is our last one, Jeff. Okay. Looks, I know we've kind of dissected it a little bit, but do you see anything really alarming on the outside? I don't. It looks like a good one to me. Another good one. Okay. So let's go ahead and cut this back. What do you see? It looks to me like it's got these flecks all over it. Uh, yeah, there's just a bunch of little spots all over in it. Yeah, let's cut the. Let's cut both ends. Oh my, we've got flecks down here too. That I means. Be, I bet if you fried that up. It would look like uh, stripes on a zebra. Wow. Wow. And that's a, that's a very classic symptom of what we call zebra chip, is that the flecks are all the way through the potato. Sometimes if it's still kind of in its early development, you may only see it part way down. But for the most part, you'll see this kind of flecking or necrosis all the way through the potato. 
So we've looked at a lot of different diseases and disorders, very common, very of concern to the state of Idaho and our potato industry, pink rot, pythium leak, potato mop top virus, some zebra chip, and of course our dry rot, and then our shatter and our black spot bruise. These are some of the most common ones that we do see.